Hey guys, Matt here from Laid Loss Harley Davidson. So today we're doing a review on the Road King and we're comparing it to the Road King Special. So we're doing kind of a dual test ride and review on both of these bikes. Matt and I just got off both of the Road Kings here. I was more on the Special and Matt was on the Standard. So the Road King's been out for a long time. I think the Road King first debuted around like 1990 or so. And the Road King Special is a version, a different version, offshoot version of the Road King Standard. And over the years, we've seen several different Road King models as well. There was a Road King Custom there for a while. The Road King Classic was a very popular model that ran for a lot of years. And so there's been different versions of Road King over the years. Right now, in the 21 model year, we have two different versions currently. So we're gonna talk a little bit about the two and contrast both of the models one against another and give you an idea of exactly what separates these two models and help you make a decision if you're looking at buying one of these bikes. Help you figure out which one is best suited for you. And really in general, if the Road King is the right bike for you as well. So first off, the Road King is the only model in the Harley-Davidson lineup that is on the touring chassis platform that doesn't have a fairing on it. So the fairing would be the big batwing fairing or the shark nose fairing on the Road Glide model. So if you're looking for a bike that has all of the benefits and capabilities of the touring chassis motorcycle, but don't necessarily want the look of the fairing because it does change the appearance of the bike significantly, then the Road King is the obvious choice for you. Some of the differences is pretty obvious. The Road King standard coming from having a windscreen and obviously the chrome finishes to the more performance look of the special. Some of the differences are, and new to this year, are the LED headlamp and the chopped down bar, which I personally like. The Road King was actually my first Harley Davidson, um, and so I, I love the Road King. I've ridden, you know, tens of thousands of miles on the Road King. And the Road King, for me, my first bike, it was the obvious choice because I'm tall. I wanted something that was capable out on the highway, touring application, and I also wanted to do a real custom radical ape hanger bar on it as well. Which, as a side note, the Road King is a great bike for any type of handlebar you want to put on it. Beach bars, ape hanger bars, it really the sky's the limit as far as you know, customization on a Road King. There's really very few things that inhibit you from doing exactly what you want on a Road King, which makes it really cool. You know, as opposed to a bike that has a fairing on it where you have to really tailor all your customizations around that fairing because it's a static, immovable part of the bike that has to, st has to be there and has to stay there. touch on the Milwaukee 8 a little bit. So the Milwaukee 8, obviously Harley-Davidson's bread and butter. It's their big twin right now. 
great engine, uh, especially from when we had the move from the twin cam to the Milwaukee 8. You've got more power now. You have a lot less vibration, although they purposefully did leave a certain element of vibration in there just to give it that Harley Davidson feel and character. You've got more of a cooling air element there now. It's oil cooled. It routes cooled oil around the heads of the, of the cylinders. And so you cool off like the exhaust ports, the hottest part of the engine. So you have less heat radiating up on you as a rider. It's just been a great engine. They continue to come out with kits to, to bump the displacement on these things. You've got a 131 kit now, stage four. And then you've got, depending on what displacement you start with, it's either a 128 or a 131, depending on if you have a 107 or the 114 from the factory. But if you, if you want the bike that has the best displacement from the factory, obviously the special is the choice for you. I feel like a lot of guys make the decision between these two bikes based on what has the bigger, bigger number on the side of the motor. And I don't necessarily agree with that. I think there's more significant factors that people need to take into consideration before they just look, oh wow, I want the bigger one, I want the 114. Off the bat, I'm, I'm just so used to a fairing in front of me. So doing highway speeds and you know getting up on the highway, I noticed right away that was a big thing as we were merging onto the freeway is feeling all the wind. Uh, so that was something I noticed right off the bat. At that same time, it's kind of nice to, to have nothing in front of you. You know, from the street glide to the road glide, having just the big fairing take up a percentage of view in front of you and having more of the open road was different. I mean, it was, it was awesome. But at that same time, you are, that trade-off is having no wind protection. So you do definitely feel that. So let's get into a little bit of what separates these two bikes and, and what significant changes we've seen over the years. So the, the Road King, it got a huge change in the 2014 model year when the Rushmore project came out. That's when they got you know, all the new changes with the front end, the saddlebags, uh, things like that. And then in the 2017 model year, that's when we saw the new Milwaukee 8, AKA the M8 engine, which is a huge significant change. And really since then, we haven't seen a whole lot of changes uh, in that same model year, the 17 model year, they, they went to the dual bending valve suspension in the front as well. And so pretty much any Road King from about 2017 to current model year is about the same. There's a couple little minor things. In the 2017 and a half model year, so this was a mid-model year launch in the 17 model year, the Road King Special came out and it basically became the blacked out version of the Road King uh, with the bigger motor now. So you got a 114 in the Special as opposed to 107. It's about 10% more power. You got about 10 foot pounds of torque more and about eight horsepower more in the special. So a little bit more uh, power. You've got the fancier wheels and you've got the Prodigy wheels on here. Here on the Road King, you've got the Slicer 2 wheels on the Road King, which is actually an attractive wheel as well. But really generally speaking, guys, if you're looking for the bike that has a little bit more utility, then the Road King is the right answer for you. If you're looking for a little bit sleeker, more modern, custom bagger looking bike, then the special is best for you. So let's kind of break it down a little bit as far as what I mean by extra utility. So in the Road King standard, you've got the windshield on there, which out on the highway makes a huge difference. I really can't overstate the, uh, the benefit as far as wind deflection that you get from a windshield on here. You've also got the exterior passing lamps on there as well, which I'd say significantly increases your light, especially out on a deserted road. I mean, you're gonna have at least 50% more light up there, which helps out a lot. You've also got, which another thing that looks gets overlooked quite a bit, you've got a taller shock on the Road King, and you've got a thicker seat as well. So the ride comfort, especially noticeable out on the highway when you're hitting those bumps at high speeds, especially with the passenger, the ride comfort on a Road King Standard is gonna be significantly more plush. The Road King Special, however, you still have a nice premium ride that you're gonna get from a touring chassis bike. And with a simple swap of the seat 
you can get a pretty comfortable ride out of this, but it does go for that lowered suspension look in the Special, which then reduces the amount of travel you have in the rear, which then you sacrifice ride quality a little bit when you reduce the travel suspension in the rear. The hold mode that RDRS offers, when you're in gear, you're holding the clutch and you're on an incline and you're trying to balance a eight, 900 pound bike, fully compressing the, the hand brake or the front brake and it holds the bike in place, which is pretty cool. Um, I didn't think that was really a big deal, but after riding it and using it, it's actually really cool, so. The differences between the two, me personally, I like the special. I like more of that performance look. Um, I like the blacked out features. The 114 is, is something I enjoy too as well. Uh, getting up on the highway, I do feel that the 114 is a little bit better in, in the higher RPMs. Uh, the 107 does feel a little bit more peppier from stoplight to stoplight. But I mean, for the rider that is stuck between the two, you just it just boils down to kind of styling. I like the Road King Standard too as well if I'm going to a do a certain build. If I want to do kind of like a Vicla style build, I definitely want to use the Road King Standard. Uh, it's got that chrome look. It's got that just classic black Harley Davidson black and chrome look, which is, you can't replicate that. Going over to the special, that's just a different build for me. I would go with more of a performance build, starting off with the 114, do a 131 kit or even a stage two, lift the suspension. I just go two opposite directions and it's kind of what, what your flavor is. They're both awesome for touring. It's on the same frame. You do get the, the nice bags on the special, the, the extended bags. Um, but yeah, it's more so of kind of what your vision is at the, at the end of kind of what your bike, what you want your bike to look like. Obviously you're gonna start with two different styles. So um, personally, if I were to buy one, I would go with a special because I like the performance look. A lot of guys shop the Road King against the Heritage as well because they're both technically touring bikes. They don't have fairings on them, but they are significantly different. One of them being on the soft tail chassis, the Heritage, and then obviously the Road King's on the touring chassis. So I, usually, I like to touch on that a little bit and give people a good idea of really what to look for in themselves and their riding habits to determine which of those two bikes is best for them. So the Heritage is a smaller frame. It weighs approximately 100 pounds less. Uh, and so if you're looking for things like a little bit better power to weight ratio, uh, a lighter bike, more nimble bike, then the soft tail is the obvious choice. If you're someone that's a little bit smaller in stature and you know, sometimes that's subjective. And so I, I try to you know, put a number to that exactly, uh, which isn't always easy. But if you're someone who's maybe 5'9", five, 5'10", five, you could probably go either way, but much shorter than that, then you're probably gonna want to go on the Heritage. Now, I know someone's probably gonna come out and say, hey, I'm 5'4 and ride a Road King, and that, that happens. But as a general rule of thumb, if you're doing more highway miles, and especially two up and getting out on the road and just laying down a lot of highway miles at 65 miles an hour plus, then generally speaking, the Road King is gonna be better for you. The ride comfort's gonna be better for you. That's not to say the Heritage isn't good. The Heritage, especially with the model or the frame change, excuse me, in the 2018 model year, the Heritage is even more capable out on the highway now. So you really can't go wrong with either of them. The Road King, you do have a little bit more options as far as the accessories that bolt on the back with the docking hardware. You've got bigger tour pack, you've got bigger saddle bags, you've got more options of your backrest, you've got more options of seats, and just generally speaking, they're bigger, larger volume and space as far as storage capability and bigger backrests. So, you know, just more comfort and tailored for people that are larger in stature. Um, again, if you're someone that is looking to have a bike that's a little bit more manageable, maybe you don't have the size and strength that someone that is six foot, 200 pounds plus, 
then you might want to consider the Heritage. Although, as I've said in, in videos in the past, technique will pretty much always trump your natural strength. So if you've got good motorcycle technique, good balance, then you can get away with riding a, a Road King or a, a touring chassis bike, even though you may not fit the mold of someone who's tall enough and big enough and strong enough to ride those motorcycles. The guy that's looking more towards a road king, maybe is not stacking thousands of miles and going across country a lot because, you know, if that's the case, I, you know, kind of steer more towards something with a fairing, a radio, you know, and a tour pack. Uh, but the guy that's doing, you know, Laughlin River runs and, and Vegas quite often, but they don't really care or, or want that fairing, obviously the road king is, is the way to go. Um, it's, it's just different in the cockpit. And once you're on the bike, um, and that's one thing I did notice, like I mentioned before, is you see more of the road. It's right in front of you. I've had customers that want, you know, the fairing and all that, but don't really want to spend the coin on it. They end up getting a Road King, which is on the same frame. It's a little less expensive. And they end up uh, running Bluetooth in their helmet and uh, even go as far as putting speakers on the bike. So uh, a lot of times people come in and they look at these at the specials, the Road King, Street Glide and Road Glide special, and they say, wow, I don't got to do much to it. You know, maybe maybe exhaust, maybe mufflers, maybe bars, and ride it. I mean, these things look really custom and really nice right from the factory. So if you're looking for a bike that is done from the factory, you just, and you like that blacked out modern look, then the Road King Special is a really good option for you. The other thing on the Road King Special is you have a little bit thicker bar as well, where they internally wire all the electrical. The Road King Standard, you have the electrical routed on the outside of the bars still. So one more thing that kind of gives this a little bit more of that custom uh, finished look, a little bit cleaner look on the handlebars as well, uh, internal wiring. I think that's something that gets overlooked quite a bit as well. A lot of times people will ask me, okay, well, why go for the Road King over a, a Road Glide or a Street Glide? And really, as Andrew mentioned, the biggest thing is the fairing and all the electronics. So if you're someone that likes to use the GPS, likes to be able to listen to their stereo, Bluetooth their music to their phone, uh, take phone calls out on the road, then the Street Glide and the Road Glide with the fairing and the infotainment system, it's an obvious choice, go to one of those bikes. But for the guy that just really likes that clean, sleek, minimalist look, that doesn't like the profile of a huge fairing in front of them, the Road King is the perfect look for them. Um, the guys that I steer to a Road King a lot of times are the guys that they know they don't like the fairing, and so a lot of times those guys start on a soft tail because they want that clean look. They don't want that big touring bagger look. But a lot of times these guys are just too big for a soft tail. Uh, you know, I had a guy in here one time who was like 6'5", probably like 250, and he was looking at like a street bob or something. And the guy, he could probably get away with riding a soft tail, but he just looked enormous on that bike. And I steered him towards a Road King and he thanked me think for years after I, I pushed him towards the Road King just because he looked better on it. it. It proportionately, he looked a lot better and it just suited his, the chassis was just better, more capable at handling his weight and size on the bike, especially when he was throwing his girlfriend on the back. So that was uh, an obvious choice. So I'd say size is definitely a determiner of whether or not to go from to make the move from a soft tail up to a road king. Uh, and also use. I think people don't always take into consideration exactly what type of riding they plan on doing. A lot of times people will get into the soft tail and, and although they're a lot more capable now with the new 2018 frame that came out a few years ago, the touring bikes are still just smoother and nicer and more planted out on the highway. Uh, you're just gonna feel a, a, different, a slightly higher level of comfort out on the highway with the touring chassis bike. Me personally, I'm six foot, six inches tall. I like the touring chassis. It opens me up a little bit more. It's larger, helps me spread and open up my rider triangle a little bit better. The relationship to my hands, my seat and my feet opens that up a little bit more and gives me more room. Could I get away with a soft tail? Could I modify it? Could I put forward controls on it? Could I put a, a kickback seat on it? Absolutely, I could do that. But as I always recommend to people, it's best to get the bike that best suits you right from the factory. 
That way you're making a minimal, minimal amount of changes to get the bike to where you know, it ultimately needs to be to suit your needs. And so by going to a touring chassis bike, it's just the obvious choice for you know, a guy at my height. None of the bikes in the touring family are gonna underperform as far as being on the highway. That's the bread and butter right there. You're stacking miles. Um, if you like that free in the wind feeling, the Row King's definitely for you. At the end of the day, it, it would really boil down to and, and kind of what the what you picture in your head. It, what kind of rider are you? What kind of what, what do you want out of the bike? Are you looking more for performance, styling? Do you want that bike where you know it's going to really woo a lot of people, or just perform really well for you? Like I said, there's I think Chrome, me personally, is making more of a comeback now. I think a lot of people in the past three to four years, maybe longer, are more jaded to the, the blacked out look. Uh, and I slowly start to see the trend of Chrome making a comeback, which is awesome. I, I like Chrome. Um, but yeah, it's, it's more of that end game of what you want your bike to look like. You are spending quite considerably more money on the special, about $3,000 more on the special than you are the standard. But if you're a guy that is a touring, real touring focused guy that gets out there on the road a lot, you're saving a lot of money in these things like the passing lamps, the windshields, the taller shocks, you know, things like that, and getting the bike at a lower price point. And so I would definitely recommend going to the Road King Standard if you're someone that's very focused on touring and just getting out there and just blazing down the highway and eating up miles. If you're a guy that does the occasional freeway ride, maybe does, you know, two, maybe three road trips a year, can you get away with the special? Absolutely, uh, especially if you really like this look. I wouldn't feel like, hey, I got to go the standard even though I don't like the look of it. I really like the look of the special. Then get the special, you know, but if all things being the same, if you're looking at doing more touring riding, especially with two people, uh, then you'll, this is a lot more cost effective choice for you with the standard over the special. If you're looking for a Road King or any other Harley Davidson in Southern California, we'd love to help you out. Come check us out here at Laidlaw's Harley Davidson where we have no dealer added markup or any dealer fees, no prep charges, none of that BS. Thanks a lot for watching guys. We'll see you out on the road. Take care, later.